So here are the steps to completing a square. We're going to go through one example together. Okay, I'll try and go through the rationale while I'm going through it again instead of just following the steps. Okay, so what we want to do, this is in standard form. Okay, this is in ax squared plus bx plus c. Our whole goal is to be able to get this, okay, into vertex form. Get it into a y equals a x minus h. I can write that better. A x minus h x minus h squared plus k. Okay, so our whole goal is to get from here to here. How we're going to do that is completing the square. Okay, completing the square is a method of making a perfect square trinomial. We can make a perfect square trinomial out of this somehow. We know when we factor it, we will get this. We will get a squared binomial. Okay, we've showed that here. Okay, we know if we make a perfect square trinomial, the factored form will be a binomial square. And that's what we want in here. So somehow we're going to make this into a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so what we're going to do, first thing, this 5 isn't helping us because 5 isn't a perfect squared number. Okay, you can't take the square root of 5 and get a whole number. And we know a perfect square trinomial has a perfect square number at the end. So this 5 is not helping us. Okay, so we're going to kind of push that off to the side by grouping the first two terms together. So we're going to group the first two terms together and leave this 5 just kind of out here. Okay, we can't just get rid of it, but we can just kind of move it off to the side for now by grouping the first two terms together. Once we've done that, okay, if there was a number in front of this x squared, we would have to factor it out. We know there's only a 1 in front of here. There's no point in dividing a 1 out because dividing things by 1 doesn't change anything. Okay, so, so for this one, since we don't have to do step two, okay, there's no number in front of the x squared except for a one, so we don't have to factor anything out. Now what we have to do, okay, we want to make this a perfect square trinomial, what's inside the brackets, okay? We want to make this a perfect square trinomial. So we have to figure out what should be there, okay? What should be there? We know a perfect square trinomial the last term is going to be half of the middle term squared, okay? Because in a perfect square trinomial, okay, um, here's a perfect square trinomial, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, okay? The middle term has always been doubled, okay? So this 8 has been doubled, okay? So if I undouble it, if I divide it by 2, I get 4. So I've gotten my b value. And then if I square that, I get 16, and that's the number that should be at the end. Okay, awesome. So all I have to do is, uh, I'll just kind of write in, before I just jump to that, we're going to do, um, we're going to do this step here, where we look at the last term in the brackets, divide it by 2, and then square it. Okay, so last term in the brackets is the 8x. We're going to divide it by 2 and square it. So I'm just going to section this off a little bit. So what essentially we're doing is we're using that rule we created um, right here. The last term for square trinomial is half of the middle term squared. Okay, so it's a b over 2 squared. b over 2 squared is, if this is my b value, 8, okay, I'm going to do 8 over 2 squared, which is 4 squared, which is 16. Okay, so all I have to do is add a 16 what's inside the brackets there, and this becomes a perfect square trinomial. Good, so it seems like all of our problems are solved. We've made a perfect square trinomial. But hold on. We can't just add 16 to an equation and claim that it's still equal. Okay, we can't just start adding things and then say it's still equal. This, is, this is, has a value of 16 higher than what there was before. Okay, so in order to balance this out, because I've added 16, I also have to subtract 16. Okay, I can't just go around adding things. Okay, so if I added a 16 to keep it equivalent, I also have to subtract the 16. Okay, so that keeps the equation equivalent. 
Okay. So now what I have in here, inside the brackets, is a perfect square trinomial, except for the fact that I have this negative 16 out at the end here. Okay, I don't want that in there because that's stopping me from having a perfect square trinomial in here. So what I'm going to do is move it outside of the brackets. How you get things outside of the brackets is by multiplying it by what's ever in front of the brackets. Okay, so in this case, I don't have anything except for a 1 in front of the brackets. You don't see anything, there's an invisible 1. Okay, we know to, if I wanted to get rid of these brackets, so if I wanted to get everything outside of the brackets, what I would do is use the distributive property and multiply everything by the 1 to get it outside of the brackets. Okay, but I don't want to get everything outside of the brackets, I just want to get the negative 16 outside of the brackets. Okay, so I'm not going to multiply everything by the 1, I'm just going to multiply the negative 16 by the 1. Okay, to get just the negative 16 out of the brackets. So, because it's a 1 value outside of the brackets this time, that's not a big deal. Okay, it's going to look like we just moved it outside, but you have to remember that. Um, how we got it outside was actually by multiplying it by what's in front. Okay, so I multiplied the negative 16 by 1, and that moved it outside of the brackets. So outside of the brackets, I have negative 16 plus that 5 that we kind of left off by itself um, at the beginning. Now I can simplify this. Okay, x squared plus 8x plus 16 is inside the brackets. Negative 16 plus 5 is negative 11. Now, what I have right here, this is beautiful. This is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, this is an a squared plus a 2ab plus a b squared. Okay, we formed that by remembering that the last term is the middle term divided by 2 squared. So I picked this last term to make this a perfect square trinomial. Okay, my a value is x. My b value is is um, 4, okay? This is a 4 squared, this is an x squared, and my middle is 2 times 4 times x, which is 8x. So this is an a squared plus a 2ab plus a b squared. Good. So if I want to factor this, I know if my a is the square root of my first term, square root of x squared is x, my b is the square root of b squared, so the square root of 16, which is 4. Okay, So I know that this is going to go, this is going to go to an a minus, or in, sorry, an a plus b squared, because this is in the form a squared plus, plus 2ab plus b squared. This is going to be an a plus b squared. So I can factor this. 2y equals x plus 4 squared, and then I have my negative 11 at the end. Okay, And you'll notice this looks like y equals ax minus h squared plus k. This is now in vertex form. Okay, Yay, we are happy, we did it, we put it into vertex form. Okay. Our a value is just 1, but that's fine. Okay. This is in vertex form. We can pick out our vertex. Okay, We've successfully gotten an equation that was in standard form to vertex form. We did that so we can take out our vertex. Our vertex is our h k values. Okay, And remember, the h is always opposite what you see because this is the equation x minus h. So this must be a negative, or h must be a negative 4 because we have x minus negative 4. So it appears as x plus 4. Okay. So just quickly, just remember, the vertex um, of an equation in vertex form is hk. The axis of symmetry is always x equals h, because the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, vertical line through the vertex, through h. Okay. So what is the vertex? The vertex, if the vertex is hk, our vertex is negative 4, opposite of what we see in the brackets. Negative 11 is our vertex, and this, because the parabola opens up, because our a value is positive, this is a minimum point. Min point. And also, 
our axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. That means a vertical line going through negative 4. Okay, so that's it. That's completing the square with a lot, a lot of reasoning behind it. Okay, hopefully that helped us understand. I'm going to do another video right after this um, that just more quickly goes through the steps and maybe it'll make the problems seem um, actually less complicated. They're actually not too bad now that we understand why we're doing what we're doing, why we're um, making a perfect square trinomial. Okay, why we're making a perfect square trinomial? Because um, a perfect square trinomial gives us a binomial product that looks like the middle part of vertex form. So if we make a perfect square trinomial, we can factor it to this, which will then look like vertex form. Okay, and we understand now how to make one by dividing the middle term by by two, okay, and then squaring it by doing the b over two squared. Okay, so now that we understand all of that, hopefully um, the next examples in the next video will make sense and we'll be good at it. Any questions? Let me know. Other than that, thanks.